Hello everybody. Once again, this is Pascal with Vanguard Global LLC. And today we're talking about why 99% of black businesses fail. One of the reasons, um, actually I'm going to give you five. I already typed out five quick reasons and I'm going to give you those five and then I'm going to explain to you how you can solve that problem or the major problem that black business seems to run into. Uh, if you look here, it says no money to properly start the business like getting your corporations set up and business licenses. That's huge. Uh, most black people, what te we tend to do is uh, do things on half measures because we don't have the money to do everything properly. The second thing that we do uh, far too often is there's no money for uh, to hire professionals, coaches, CPAs, you know, in other words, certified public accountants uh, with backgrounds in dealing with your type of business. That's really important to me. Um, uh, business lawyers. So in other words, you know, there are a lot of different types of attorneys, lawyers, whatever you want to call them out in the world. And you want someone that specifically deals with uh, what you deal with. So back in the day when uh, I was in the medical supply business, uh, there, was, uh, spe there were specific attorneys that you would go to because in the medical supply business, you're dealing with the government and you wanted to make sure that your stuff was right as how uh, how per how yeah, I can't even say it right how they saw it right so you wanted to get with an attorney that specialized in dealing with medical supplies um, to keep you out of trouble because you would do federal time messing around with um, uh, medical supplies and doing a whole bunch of things wrong so you want to have a an attorney that deals with exactly what you're talking about. The next thing on the list that I typed out here is no money for proper training in how to run your business. What I find in a lot of my clients, honestly, is that they don't have enough money to go out and get the proper training. So they just kind of wing it. And that is a huge problem for black businesses. We, we, we wing everything. We wing restaurants. We wing, you know, doing, um, uh, you know, whatever type of due diligence you should be doing for the specific type of business you have. So you got to stop it. Um, the next thing is uh, no money uh, to run your business for more than a few months and you have no rainy day fund. So huge, 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 huge. So many black people get involved in doing businesses that, a are very capital intensive like opening up a restaurant opening up a restaurant unless you have a bunch of money and a huge skill set and are able to hire the proper people managers waiters waitresses um, cooks and all that other stuff I, I don't think restaurants are really the best I've seen people open up restaurants multiple times and it's always the same type of thing uh, a fish shack or a barbecue joint, um, you know, that type of thing. Uh, and, and so in other words, and then they place those businesses in areas that um, don't necessarily have a, uh, a higher income bracket. And they also don't have the money to do the due diligence necessary to find out if that type of restaurant will do well in that area, whatever area they're setting it up in. So I don't really suggest doing restaurants and I'll talk about that a little bit later. So then uh, the last thing on the list is uh, no money to support yourself separately from the business so it can grow without you needing to take a wage from it. Ridiculously huge, ridiculously important. One of the things that we find um, most uh, of the people that we deal with, uh, and, it, and this goes for, for non-blacks non as, as well as black folks. So is that you know they they create a business they take everything that they have whatever savings they could get together whatever little credit cards they have and they and they'll take that money and they'll start a business so the business is starting like on less than a shoestring and then they'll turn around and say oh the business made fifty dollars today i need to take twenty five dollars of that so i can pay my bill and then um, uh, the other twenty five dollars me and my family or I have to, you know, eat on it or whatever the case may be, pay my car note. 
and you have to have enough money to be able to separate you from you know from what you're generating if you can't do that you probably shouldn't start a capital intense business I would suggest that you start something that really doesn't require um, a whole lot of capital and if it does require a whole lot of capital uh, I would probably suggest that you um, don't do it unless you have you know I don't know a um, few hundred thousand dollars minimum uh, sitting aside and that you can lose number one and uh, number two if you don't have a few hundred thousand dollars that you can sit aside then you need to start thinking about businesses that are more uh, online structured so in my particular instance my greatest wins have been in businesses that literally um, uh, would take little of nothing to get them going to get them up and running in other words so let's say setting up a corporation for someone for me to set up a corporation for someone someone pays me first then I take part of their money that they paid me and then I'll set up their corporation utilizing that money so that kind of business works uh, coaching same thing someone pays me and then what I'm giving them is my time which we all have an abundance of time so I'm giving them my time and my knowledge base in order to help them grow their business or change their existence in however way they want to change their existence the other thing that I've done in the past like even with the um, uh, let's say when I was in the uh, I don't know whatever medical supply business one of the things that um, that we did is it was different because I knew that the federal government uh, being Medicare Medicaid was going to pay me I was pretty sure of that as long as I did everything right so although I had to put out my money first it was simple because that type of business allowed me to let's say if I went and bought a wheelchair um, a motorized wheelchair for a client I could go buy that let's say if it cost me fifteen hundred dollars not a big deal because my return from Medicare would be fifty five hundred dollars so math is pretty simple all it takes is you know that fifteen hundred dollars out I wait 30 days or less I get five thousand five hundred dollars back that's a four thousand dollar profit which allows me to then do the same thing but expand get more clients in that arena so those are the type of businesses that I would suggest you consider um, even in the, back in the day when we were doing you know um, helping people with uh, directly helping people with uh, credit repair or any of those type of things those are businesses that once again someone pays you first and then you use your expertise to help them um, you know with whatever their scenario is those are the type of businesses I would suggest you do or um, you know creating a course you would think creating a course is a difficulty it is not it is not by any stretch of the imagination um, writing ebooks is not a problem as a matter of fact um, I will get into this in part two of this uh, talk where you can have someone else write an entire book for you but we're going to move on real quick because I want to show you a couple of things that I think are going to be important to you, um, in my opinion. So, here is a book that I wrote. I uh, didn't have anyone write it for me. We took our years, so my years of experience in building business credit and having built hundreds of thousands of dollars in business credit and, you know, just kind of uh, reduced all that down into a book and you can get this book for free so the book is called credit building masterclass and what I would suggest you do is go pick up this book I just might go pick it up you can just simply go to credit building masterclass.com credit building masterclass.com let me expand this uh, view so you can actually see the the domain up here so it's credit building masterclass.com um, so you know there it is for you and you can just pick up this book absolutely free 
And this book, it literally, it's, it's designed to teach you to rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Uh, simply put, once you learn the steps that are in this book, you can easily, easily um, raise hundreds of thousands of dollars and then start, you know, fun, uh, you know, worrying about your business. Uh, in my opinion, this is my opinion. I think that it's imperative to, uh, you know, have your capital together and then start thinking about the business. Don't do it in the in the reverse. Don't do it backwards. Uh, get your capital together first and then go ahead and do the rest. So there's a part here where it says, um, you know, you can buy it, but you don't have to buy it. You can just simply uh, put your, your name and email in here and you can get the book for free. And it will show you how to literally create one million dollars in capital if you so desire. And I'm going to give you in, in part two of this um, ways that you can raise money without you utilizing your your own um, credit and all that other good stuff. And that's going to be in part two. So uh, stick with me and we're going to go to part two in uh, the next minute here. Thank you.